gentlemen, you're all very welcome to this very special occasion here tonight. So Paul Turo and Elik take an all card on special to show and show a Gillian TV and you're going to kill one time. I would ask you first of all to turn off your mobile phones. You need to have all mobile phones turned off. I would ask you also to be quiet during the performance. Over a million people died from starvation or disease, and another two million people emigrated in the ten years following the first flight. A greater proportion of the total population of Ireland died in the Great Famine than in any other famine in modern times. In proportionate terms, it was even greater than the famines that ravaged countries in Africa in the 1970s and 1980s. Between the census of 1841 and the census of 1851, the population of Ireland fell from over 8 million to just over 6.5 million people. This represented a 20% loss in population. During the same 10-year period, the population of Hollywood Parish fell by 670 people to just over 2,000 people in 1851. This represented a drop of 27% in the population of Hollywood. Mrs. Elizabeth Smith, who lived in Bajibai's house and was married to landlord Colonel Henry Smith, kept a diary all during the famine years. The local landlord for Hollywood was Lord Walford. At the height of the famine, in April 1847, Mrs. Smith criticised her fellow landlord for his neglect of his Wicklow estate. She referred to Hollywood as Lord William Bursford's wretched den for pauper squatters. His neglect, she said, pauperised the whole area. It's a harsh harm the land has dealt with. Not one in the parish do I know had this before me. Father, Father, what are we to do? Oh, heaven help us all. The plague of failure spells disaster for the poorest people on the land. During the 10 year period from 1845 to 1854, it has been estimated that over half a million people in Ireland were evicted for failure to pay their rent to the landlords or their middlemen. We know from the parish register here in Hollywood that a total of 134 families were removed from townlands in this parish around the time of the famine. The cabins in which these poor families lived were levelled to the ground and the occupants put to the road as paupers. Many of these people would have ended up in the workhouse. Some of the luckier ones probably managed to emigrate. The people affected were the poorest of the poor in Hollywood. They lived on the margins and were dependent for their staple diet on the potato. When the blight came, not just in one year, but in successive years from 1845 on, it spelled disaster for these poor people. Just the bear marshal, the bear marshal. We won't stay long. Please. Get away from the house. Ah. Get out of the way. Ah. There is no help for you here. We have nothing ah, here. Poor nothing. Kids. Poor kids. We're just a step from ah. the road ourselves. Now move on. Move on. So we can hardly provide for ourselves. Murphy, Murphy, John Murphy. 
You must leave this place now, for you have fallen in your rent. <coughs> his lordship and his spies, they come coming over yonder hill to put you and your family to the road. Gather your poor wife, your children, and your few humble belongings and get from this wretched place. There's nothing for you here, John. There's nothing, nothing. God help us, John! Go into the house, McCoy, oh. and stay there. Oh, The Poor Law Extension Act of 1847 introduced the notorious Quarter Acre Clause. This clause denied workhouse entry to anyone with a plot of land that was greater than a rood. Those seeking famine relief after Duke 1847 were required to set up surrender their property. The Quarter Acre Clause made it easy for the landlords to evict any smallholder who had fallen into arrears with rent. Some landlords gave financial assistance to emigrate to poor tenants who agreed to give up their holdings. But in cases where formal evictions took place, it was usually the practice of the landlord to hire a crowbar brigade to level and burn the affected dwelling there and then, as soon as the tenants had been evicted. These crowbar brigades would be backed up by a party of soldiers or police. Joe Murphy, both you and your family are to be evicted from this premises for falling back on your rent. And with this failed crop, I see no hope of you ever paying up. Please, sir, just a little more time. We have nowhere to go. For the love of God, man, have mercy on my family. Remove yourself from this property, or I'll have you forcefully removed. This is my home, damn you! Oh! 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 Oh!
County Cork for the Illustrated London News on the 13th of February 1847, Vanity files the following report. On reaching Skibbery, I witnessed such scenes of misery and privation as I trust it may never again be my lot to look upon. Neither pen nor pencil could ever portray the misery and horrors at this moment to be witnessed in Skibbereen. We first proceeded to Bridgetown, and there I saw the dying, the living and the dead, lying indiscriminately upon the same floor, without anything between them and the cold earth, save a few miserable rags upon them. Not a single house out of 500 could boast of being free from death and fever. Though several could be pointed out with the dead lying close to the living for the space of three or four or even six days, without any effort being made to remove the body to a last resting place.
survive that great calamity and no doubt we will also manage to survive the present day recession. I want to thank everybody who took part in this performance here tonight. I want to thank everybody who made it possible, all the people who did the work and there was tremendous work done here tonight. Uh, in particular I want to thank the Ballymore Drama Society and the Hollywood Locals who took part in the production and everyone indeed who, who played a, a role or part in, in the whole thing. Uh, I, I just want to make one special mention I want to mention in particular the Director of Operations here tonight, Mr. Robert Farrelly from Ballymore Youth. Uh, thank, thank you all for coming and God bless. Sir, we will not give Billy.